Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. I was wondering if you'd be interested in learning more about a Casio analog digital watch that has triple sensor and uh, atomic timekeeping and, oh, and look, a nice titanium bracelet. Well, I've got a video just for you. I recently did an in-depth review of this watch here, the PRW50, and then just a few days later, wouldn't you know it, I found a good deal on this one here, the PRW60. So, um, well, they're practically the same watch. They do have different modules, but all the functions and features appear to be the same. So I'm going to go through and give you a good in-depth review of this one. This is the PRW60T for titanium, the watch bracelet is made out of titanium. Uh, the case is not titanium. The back of the watch is stainless steel, just like it is on this one. But uh, it has that titanium look, and uh, I think I'm going to enjoy it. Let's look into it. The main features of this watch, well, first of all, it's tough solar. So it has a solar cell built into the face of the watch, and you won't have to change the batteries for many, many, many years. I, I've got my, my oldest tough solar watch that I have is now almost 14 years since I bought it, and I've never had to change the battery or do any, any kind of maintenance that would require opening the watch up. So I'm expecting similar performance here. I don't really know how long it'll go before you have to change a battery, but uh, maybe 14 years or more, I guess. Also, it has the, uh, the multiband six from Casio. That's, that's atomic timekeeping built in. So what it actually has is a, a radio receiver built in, and it will automatically receive atomic time information from any of six transmitters in different parts of the world. There's one in China. There are actually two in Japan. There's also one in the UK and one in Germany, and then of course WWVB in the United States. So if you're within range of any of those transmitters, this watch will, will pick up the uh, atomic time automatically and keep itself synchronized to the correct time right down to the second. It checks itself every night starting at midnight. So uh, as long as it's successful every day, you know, it's never going to be wrong by, by more than a fraction of a second every day. If you are not within range of the atomic time transmitters, uh, then it'll run as a regular quartz watch and it'll be accurate to within 15 seconds a month anyway. So not bad. And you can manually set the time if you need to. As for me, you know, I live pretty close to Colorado, so I'm, I'm able to get the multiband six pretty well. So with me, all I need to do is set the, uh, set the time zone and I'm, I'm good to go. No battery, no, no time setting. It's, it's not a bad watch at all. Some of the other features here, if I go through the modes here, it has, well, okay. A barometer. Okay. I should tell, I should tell you about the triple sensor here. The triple sensor means it has a barometer which it also uses to, uh, to, to calculate altitude. So that becomes uh, an altimeter as well. The other sensor is a thermometer and also a compass. So those three sensors uh, come in handy for you, you know, if, especially if you're hiking or climbing or mountain biking and things that would, you know, where, where you would need a compass or you would be interested in altitude changes. Here you go. Not, uh, not, not difficult to do with this watch. Okay, the next mode on this one is, uh, well, thermometer. Okay, so there you go. It's, it's not really 82 degrees in this room, but because I've been handling this watch, it's picked up some of my body heat from my hands. So uh, something to keep in mind if you are using this to get accurate temperature readings outside somewhere, you might, have, you might need to take the watch off and leave it sitting somewhere away from your body for a few minutes to get a, an accurate uh, temperature reading there. Okay, next mode, uh, recall. So what this, uh, this when I get into the uh, altitude uh, information, you can, you can store altitude readings from different times. And so this is where you would recall those, those things that you've, uh, you've saved, okay. Next mode, stopwatch. Okay, so, you know, pretty standard stuff as far as um, digital watches go. You start and stop the stopwatch with this button on the lower right side or split time with that button up top there, or stop it and reset with that one. So not bad. Okay, next is a countdown timer. And you can set this anywhere from one minute up to 60 minutes. Right now it's set for 10 minutes. And you know, for that one, you just push the button to start it, stop it, and then this button here to reset it. So yeah, choose any, any whole minute number from one to 60 on your countdown timer. Okay, alarms, you've got uh, five alarms and they'll go off daily. Right now, 
I haven't even set these yet. They're all set to, to, to midnight for default. And then, of course, there's the uh, hourly signal. So it beeps every hour on the hour. So this is where you scroll through to, to look at what those alarms are and to turn the signal or the alarm on or off. It's this button on the upper left for that. Okay, world time mode. So you can choose any time zone you want. In this case, the uh, UTC is the, the default there. So when you're choosing time zone settings, see so you have these little, these little abbreviations around the outside of the face, those little three letter abbreviations referring to different cities and different time zones in the world. That's where you choose whichever time zone you want for your world time and for your local home time as well. So uh, un unlike some other watches where the, the abbreviation for the city might appear down here in the LCD display, on this one, you, you can only choose your time zone using those city abbreviations around the face. So again, this one uh, just showed me UTC. And so that's my local time right here in the digital display when I'm in this mode. And the hands, the analog hands, are the place where it shows you the, the world time time. And let's see, if I push this button down here on the lower right side, then it shows me AM or PM. So right now, you know, it's just after 4 PM at UTC. See, there's a P right there. There's an A right there. And that thing right there, just for a moment, the second hand shows you AM or PM, and then it goes back to normal operation. And let's see. Next, it's the radio control. So this is where it's telling me the last time it was able to receive its uh, atomic time information, which that was today just after midnight. That's what it's supposed to do. It will automatically try to receive atomic time information at midnight. It'll last uh, anywhere between two and 10 minutes to process that information. If, if it's not successful, if the reception wasn't very good or you know something like that, then it will try again at 1 a.m., and then again at 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. If it is successful, it's going to stop, uh, stop trying until the next night at midnight. But it will try up to six times to receive that atomic time information every night. Reception is better at night. You want to keep this watch away from, from things that might cause radio interference overnight, and uh, you'll get the best reception. Also, you want to keep it away from strong sources of magnetism. You know, you don't want to set this down on top of a motor, <laughs> or you got a microwave oven on the kitchen counter. Don't leave this watch sitting on top of that <laughs> when you're using the microwave, because, you know, it's susceptible to magnetic uh, interference. Uh, and, and that is a, it's, it's got a magnetic compass as well. So you don't want to mess that up by, by leaving this too too close to a source of magnetism. And okay, I'll press the mode button again, and then we're back to regular timekeeping mode. You may have noticed when I switched to regular timekeeping mode there, it showed me uh, the time, and briefly it showed me the letter M right here in, in this position. And that refers to the battery charge state. So it's telling me that the battery is only charged to medium right now, and that's to be expected. I just got this watch, and so it's been sitting in a box uh, you know, and the battery's been draining down a little bit. So yeah, medium battery charge when it's first out of the box, that's expected. If I were to keep this uh, running, you know, just in these normal lighting conditions for a while, or even set it near a window where it gets uh, some nice bright sunlight for a while, then that M would turn into an H for a high state of battery charge. Uh, so M and H are good, medium and high. If you get down below medium, if you get to low or less, then some of the functions stop working until you charge it up. But as long as you're at medium or high, you'll be in good shape. And I found that, you know, once I get it up into high, then it usually just stays at high as long as I'm using the watch in normal everyday lighting condition. All right, I'm gonna quickly show you some of the other modes here. Of course, the compass mode. And uh, it, is a, it is a magnetic compass. So right now, uh, actually works best. I'm gonna take it out of this box for a moment. It works best if you can keep the uh, keep the top of the watch parallel to the you know the ground, so you know horizontal here, just like that. Uh, I'm turning it up this way to make it easier for the camera to see what's going on, but ideally I would have it turned about like that. And uh, right now the the second hand is is operating as the uh, the compass's north needle, right? So if I turn it like this and uh, have it pointing to the 12 o'clock position on the watch, 
Yeah, that, that's, that's magnetic north right now. And right there in this readout, it's giving you uh, the degrees as well. So a, a digital readout for how many degrees and what your heading is uh, towards the top of the watch while that needle is going there. So if I turn it around, for example, like this, and now the needle is still, uh, oh, oh, it times out after a minute. So let me push that compass button again and restart this. Okay, so right there, you know, the needle is basically still pointing north, but since I've turned the watch around, that heading right there now shows, you know, about 180 degrees. So that's what you're going to see in, you know, just regular, regular compass operations. And it's also kind of nice that uh, right there, it's showing, you know, east or east, northeast or north or whatever, you know, northeast. So you've got that, uh, that right there, along with the heading, along with the, the needle pointing north. So, okay, then uh, let's see, I'm going to change modes here. Pressing this button down here is going to take me to the altimeter mode. So right now it's showing me that uh, we're 4830 feet above sea level. Now that's actually not correct because it's a, again, a barometric altimeter. So as the barometric pressure changes uh, because of weather, then this is going to change as well, even though uh, I'm, I'm in the same place where I was yesterday and this reading was different. It's because the barometric pressure has changed. So you need to calibrate that, you know, before you start your hike, for example, and usually the barometric pressure changes during one day it won't be enough to affect this too much. But, uh, you know, it's a good reference for when you're hiking or biking or climbing. But do keep in mind that you should calibrate this before you venture out. Now let's go a little more in depth here. You see, I was used to G-Shock watches before I got into these ProTrek watches. And uh, one thing I was not used to was using this crown to get into the settings of, of the watch. So this crown here, it, uh, right now it's, it's locked in place. It's screwed in um, clockwise and now it won't move because it's tight enough. And I don't want to crank that too hard. But if I want to get into some of the settings, I'm going to have to loosen this by turning it counterclockwise, just like this. And at a certain point as I'm turning that, it's going to just kind of pop loose. And I can feel that the resistance has, yeah, now there's no resistance there. And you can even see it wobble a little bit. So right now I'm still not setting anything, but I have loosened this. So I'm, used, I'm, I'm ready to get into the setting modes here. So let's just show you how you set this. First of all, I'm going to go back to my regular timekeeping mode. And in the regular timekeeping mode, there are three ways that this uh, digital display can show you what's going on. Right here, it's showing the, the month and date. And this line here is a barometric pressure trend indicator. Okay, so it's showing me that the pressure has been going up over the last several hours. If I push this button here, uh, it will just show me the, you know, the regular time here, AM or PM, or if I have it in 24 hour mode, it'll be, you know, six digits, 24 hour mode. Um, and that should be the same as what the hands are showing. Okay. Or the other thing you can have here is just, yeah, the abbreviation for the day of the week plus the date. So those are the three ways that, uh, that that can be set for the regular timekeeping mode. Now from here, if I want to get into the setups, I pull this crown. So I've already loosened the crown, so I'm going to pull it out. And now it's prompting me to set the city. All right, it's set to the Denver time zone, the mountain time zone, because that's where I am. Now, if I want to change the city uh, with my G-Shock watches, I would just, you know, push one of these buttons down here. But actually with this one, you twist this crown. See, and it's showing you the, the hour hand has changed as it's pointing to different cities for different time zones for your home time. I can go back the other way as well. Okay, and again, when I, when I stop there, the hour hand moving independently is going to try to correspond to these other settings I've done. I'm gonna put it back into Denver for now. And from this point, if I wanted to manually set the time, I would push this button up here on the upper left side. And this is where I can just scroll ahead hours and minutes this way to manually set the time or, and, and if I twist this a lot and kind of let go, it's going to keep going until I make it stop. So that's a nice way to have it go, you know, a long ways for you without having to keep twisting this. Or if I only wanted to adjust the hour, I push this mode button down here and there we go. Now I'm just adjusting the hour again. I've still, I'm still on the Denver time zone as far as the watch knows, 
but I've been, uh, you know, just manually adjusting the time. This is for, you know, for some reason, oh, and look at how the AM and PM indicator has shifted there as I've gone around. So this is telling me I'm, I'm adjusting the hour manually for, you know, that's just just after midnight and that's just before midnight. Okay, that's kind of cool. All right. So yeah, manual adjustment here in case that was necessary. Now, of course, when I adjust the time manually like this, whatever I've set it to will be replaced by atomic time the next time it's able to receive anything from that multiband six receiver. So I'm just fiddling with it now, but I'm going to make the uh, multiband six correct myself here soon. Push this button again. And this is where I can manually adjust the date as well. Year, month, and date. And again, if I just uh, pull this back and kind of twist it like that. Maybe I can get it to scroll ahead. Yeah, now I can scroll ahead without my touching it. And then I just kind of stop and say, okay, that's enough. Uh, okay, and so those are the different ways you can manually set the time there. I'm going to push this, this crown back in now. And as far as the watch knows, this is the correct time. But I'll reset it in just a moment. Okay, the next setting I want to get into here. Okay, I'm on the, the barometer here. And if for some reason I didn't think this was correct, I could uh, reference this against, uh, you know, some known weather station in my area, the closest, you know, reliable weather station, whatever that is reporting as the barometric pressure. I can adjust this by, again, pulling the crown out and either going forward or backward there to go up or down to uh, adjust that to what I think the correct barometric pressure is. And I'm going to, I'm going to put it back to where it was because I think that was correct. And you'll notice that these hands automatically moved out of the way. It does that on some of the modes here so that it doesn't get in the way of this uh, LCD display while you're trying to make adjustments. That's kind of nice. If uh, you know, I tried to do this at, uh, you know, 6.25 p.m., I'd have two hands covering this up, but they would automatically move out of the way for me when I got into into here. Also, this is where I can uh, change it to kind of a metric or non-metric. So right now it's inches of mercury, which that works good for my area. But if I wanted it to show uh, the barometric pressure in hectopascals, that's where I could make that adjustment right there. All right, I'm through making adjustments. So I'm going to push the crown back in. And uh, next is the temperature. And again, I could recalibrate this if I thought that this wasn't right. I could bring that back down or back up, um, fine tuning that. It should be accurate to within a couple of degrees anyway. But if I think it's wrong, you know, there, there I can make my, uh, my adjustment there. I could also push this button here and I could change the units from Fahrenheit to Celsius. So that's an easy thing to do. I'm gonna push that back in. Okay, now here, uh, yeah, the recall mode. I'll get in, into that in just a moment. Uh, stopwatch, okay, that, that's, again, there's no real adjustments there. But here with the countdown timer, pull the crown out and this is where I can select some other starting number for the countdown timer. Push that back in and then I'm good to go to start that countdown. Okay, or I'm going to stop it for now. Uh, again, with the alarms, you know, the hourly signal, that's just an on and off right there using this button up there. And you'll notice when I turn the, that hourly signal on, there's a little uh, SIG that appears there. And so in all modes, you can see whether that's on or off. But if I then switch to one of these alarms and decide to set the alarm, again, pull the crown out. And this is where I can either go ahead with minutes here. And if I keep going uh, past, you know, the hour mark, it will just advance the hour. Or if I wanted to push this button down here and just adjust the hour, Okay, to get to where I want and push the crown back in. And now that one is set and by default it's on if I've made a change to it or I could turn that off again there. So again, you can do that with all those alarms. And that's, you know, pretty standard as far as setting alarms on digital watches, just that if you're not used to using the crown, you know, I needed to show you that. Okay, world time mode. So again, this is where I can pull the crown and select a different time zone. By default, it was UTC. But if I want to change that to some other city, I can scroll ahead on the map this way or go back. Let's say it's on London right now, which uh, typically is the same as UTC unless there's daylight saving time. Now, if I wanted to activate daylight saving time for that time zone I've selected, I can push this mode button down here and see now that allows me to either have daylight saving time or summertime on 
or off for this world time time zone. And you'll notice when it's displaying daylight saving time or summertime, DST appears down here as well in, in that. So that's where I make that selection. I'm going to leave it off for now because uh, this time of year, London is not in summertime. And push that back. And so right now, what it's showing me, again, according to the, the time that I've set, this would be my local time. And right here now is showing, and it says HT for home time. Uh, and then the analog hands are showing, again, London without daylight saving time. And if I push this here, it's showing me that that, that would be just about almost 8 o'clock AM because that's what, the, that's what that showed me. Okay, next mode, uh, radio control. So right here again, it's reporting to me that uh, the last time it did that was earlier today. If I pull the crown out, I can turn that automatic reception on or off. I like to leave it on, of course, but I can turn it off if I want to, to save battery power, or maybe I just didn't want this to set itself to the right time. I wanted to leave it on, you know, <laughs> this wrong time that I've set it to. Or maybe I'm in a part of the world where, um, you know, the, the radio reception is not, not available for multiband six, so I can leave that off if I want to. I'm gonna turn it on for now and push that in. And so also this is where if I wanted to initiate a manual time reception, I could do it from this screen right here. And what I do is uh, I just hold this button down and see it says RC. I held that down until I saw an exclamation point. And so now I can just leave it here. And the best thing to do when you're trying to receive your multiband six atomic time information is leave the watch by itself. Don't play with it. Don't fiddle with it while it's trying to do this. Try to leave it in an area where, uh, you know, it's maybe close to a window. It's far away from things that would cause radio reception problems, like you're not in a, in a in a, in a big steel building, that might be a problem. Or it's not next to, you know, the refrigerator or too close to the computer or something that might cause some radio interference. I've got some video gear running right now, and that may be causing some radio reception problems as well. But I'm going to leave this for a moment and see if it'll set itself. Uh, okay, the, this uh, right there where it's L1, L2, and L3, that indicates the reception strength. So L1 is not great. L2 is also not that great. But L3 is uh, pretty good. So if you can leave, if it will stay solid on L3 for a few minutes, it should be able to set itself back to the correct time and stay that way for, uh, you know, for, for un until it has to, uh, you know, receive, receive again. All right, it just took a few minutes, but it was able to do it when I moved it away from the video gear and let it do its thing. So now that I'm here and uh, everything's set to the right time, Push that again and I'm back to my home time. Now, from here at the kind of the home screen, the, the regular timekeeping mode, uh, I showed you how if I pull this crown out, I can start, uh, you know, changing the, the time zone and, and manually set the time. But if I push this button down here, there are some other settings I can get into. First of all, this is uh, my daylight saving time for my home time zone. Do I want it to change automatically or do I want it to uh, always be off or always be on? That's where I can make this setting right here. I'm going to leave it on. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to leave it on automatic for me because <laughs> I do like it to change automatically from the from the information it receives. Okay, let's push that again, and it says key with that musical note. It means that every time I push a button to change modes or to start and stop a stopwatch, and most of the times when you press a button, when this says key, it will make a little bit of a beep. But if I turn the crown here, I can switch that to mute. And so it's not going to make a beep every time I push a button. It will still make a beep when an alarm goes off or the hourly signal or at the end of a countdown timer. It still will beep for those things, but it's just not going to beep every time I, I change modes if I leave that in mute. So I'm going to leave it in you know, non-mute for now. Push this again. And this uh, refers to the automatic backlight. Now down here, this is a button for the light right there. Okay, not really obvious, but that is a light button. However, I can also have the backlight come on automatically if I have auto backlight enabled. So basically there's a sensor deep inside this watch. And when you are wearing the watch and you kind of move it up here towards your face as though you're going to look at it, it senses that position and it will automatically turn on the backlight if you have that activated. So I like to leave that on. It's kind of convenient when you don't have to press a button. Just turn the watch towards yourself 
and the backlight comes on. You might want to leave that off if you're trying to save battery power, so that's something you can do for that. But I'll leave it on. Since this is rechargeable, I'm not really concerned about draining the battery too much. So, okay, next mode that I can set here. Uh, the backlight can either be on for three seconds or one and a half seconds, and that's where you can adjust that. Again, for me, I don't think I need to conserve battery power, but if you want to conserve battery power, you'd want a shorter backlight when it comes on. Okay, and then, okay, this is where you can either get a 12 hour or 24 hour readout in the digital display. And I'm gonna leave it at uh, 12 hour mode for now. And this is power save. Now power save means that when the watch is not being used, it tries to um, save power. And the way it does that is after 10 p.m., if the watch is uh, it's not moving, it's not sensing any movement there, and it's in the dark, it's going to assume that nobody's wearing this watch. So after about an hour, you know, after 10 p.m., if it's in the dark, the, the digital display, this LCD display, will go blank to save power. And if it stays in the dark, uh, for you know several days like a week then maybe the hands will stop moving as well it's going to go into different power saving schemes there by you know shutting shutting functions down if it appears that no one's using the watch if i were to leave this in a drawer or you know maybe in a box like it was in a box for a long time before i got it right then some of the functions were shutting down because it was just in the dark but it's, it's easy to take it out of that kind of sleep mode and bring the functions back when power save is, is available. And the best way to do that is press any button and that will bring all the functions back, including the LCD display. Or you can expose it to a good light source. You know, as long as it thinks it's in the light, someone's using it, then it'll come out of that sleep mode. Or again, you kind of move it as though you're wearing it and that will also take it out of that sleep mode when power save is uh, is available there but i can turn that off and if i turn power save off then none of the functions are going to shut down um, automatically it's just gonna you know not going to try to save power i'm gonna leave it on though I, I don't mind having that on and there there we are back to uh back to you know the start of that sequence uh setting things up so i'm going to push the crown back in and with the crown back in right now it's still kind of loose you know i still mm -hmm. turn that loose um, for best results, for best uh, water resistance, you want to tighten that back in. So I gently push that in while I'm twisting it clockwise. And at a certain point, you can sort of feel that it catches as you're turning it and pushing gently in. And so it's kind of got that threaded screw type stuff there. And at a certain point, you can tell that it's, uh, it's offering enough resistance that it is locked in. You don't want to crank it on there too hard. You don't have to crank it on there too hard, but you want to make sure it's just a little bit snug to, uh, to make sure that the water resistance is as it should be. See, typically with this one, it's a 10 bar water resistance. So that's 100 meters and you know, that's, that's not bad. I don't think I'm ever going to take this below water that deep. <laughs> Well, hang on, as long as we're here, let me tell you about uh, hand alignment. These hands all can operate independent of each other. And every now and then the watch will check the hand alignment to make sure it's okay. But if you want to, uh, you want to check the hand alignment manually at any time, this is how you do it. Starting here, I'm gonna pull this out right there, okay? And now I'm going to uh, hold down this button on the lower right side. I gotta hold it down. It says hand set, keep holding until it says until it says hand adjust, and then I let go. And so now the hands are going to uh, check themselves. They're each going to, in turn, go up and point to the 12 o'clock straight up position. And I have to wait until they're done doing this. Okay, and okay, when it's done, then it's prompting me to push the crown back in because it says, yep, everybody's aligned, everybody's pointing straight up to the 12. There's a good hand alignment, and I push that in. And we're back to regular timekeeping mode at this point. Now, going back to the compass, this is a magnetic compass. So it may be that uh, this needs to be calibrated sometimes for a couple of reasons. First of all, magnetic north is not the same as true north. If you're using GPS devices, maybe you're used to seeing true north on those. Magnetic north is different. So you can set the declination. You can set this to... Uh, you know, compensate for the difference between magnetic north and true north. 
Or there's also a way that uh, I won't get into it right here, but you can calibrate the compass by simply, uh, you know, pushing buttons and then it'll prompt you to turn it 180 degrees and push a button again. And so there, there are things you can do to make sure the compass is as accurate as it can possibly be. I'm going to switch here to uh, the altimeter mode. And again, this, because the barometric pressure has changed, this is not exactly what it should be for my location here. I'm closer to 5,000 feet. So I'm going to pull this crown out and just twist that forward and increase that value until it gets up closer to what I think it should be for this location. Um, you know, as you're hiking and climbing and stuff, uh, the places where you are, there should be maps and there should be places where you can find out what is the exact altitude of the places you are when you're maybe starting your hike, for example. And you can set this to, you know, that correct altitude and push that in. So now that's a good reference for me to start. Oh, it went down by five feet. I'm going to, well, whatever that is. It's a little sensitive sometimes, but I think we're good to go. Okay. Now, if I want to take this as my starting point and save this, uh, this altitude for this time, if I push and hold this button down here and yeah, REC for record, when that stopped blinking, now that's been recorded. And if I go back here to my recall mode, then uh, it shows right there, uh, today's date and time and the altitude that I recorded. If you scroll through uh, the different things on here, I haven't saved a lot, but uh, there it gives me a maximum and a minimum. Uh, now this is probably from the factory where it was built. So that's, uh, you know, that's a, that's a few months ago and a much lower altitude than I have been to with this watch. But these are some of the things that it uh, saves. Also, ascent and descent, uh, it's got those values that it can save. As, as you're using the watch for hiking and climbing and those things, and you start using those functions, there'll be some data there that you can recall. Now, you may have noticed as I change modes, this hand up here points to different things on the face that is showing me barometer, temperature, you know, it's showing me the different modes that I'm going through. And if I want to, let's say I'm on temperature here and I want to go as quickly as I can back to the regular timekeeping mode. I don't have to keep pushing buttons to get back there like this. What I could do is just press and hold this mode button on the lower left side, hold it for just a couple seconds, it flashes time, and then it goes straight back to the regular timekeeping mode. That's a quick way to return. Also, um, if I go back here to the altitude mode, okay, um, there are some settings here besides just calibrating this. If I push this button down here, then here I can choose an interval. So when it's automatically taking some altitude readings in different modes, it can go either every five seconds or every two minutes, taking those automatic readings, push mode again. And here I can select a differential. So I can actually use the second hand to show me if I've been climbing up or descending here. And uh, there's a little scale here, some tiny numbers, one, two, three, four, etc. And so those can represent 100 meter increments or 1000 meter increments. And that's where you set that. And also push this again. I can change this from uh, meters to feet in here. And uh, okay, back there. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of settings you can do here. And as far as that differential goes, see right here, I'm in the uh, normal uh, altimeter mode. And the second hand is doing its regular thing for timekeeping, right? Showing my time there. But if I push this button up here while I'm in altimeter mode, then the second hand can become my differential indicator. So right now it's showing that I'm way off the scale. And that's because of the way I set the differential value here to, uh, you know, 100 meters. But if I change that to 1000 meters, and now I go back here. Uh, well, I, okay, it's still off the scale because I think it's trying to show from that uh, reference where the clock, where the watch was made down uh, closer to sea level. But as I start putting in different values, you can use this. And uh, you know, if you're, if you're holding steady, then the second hand will just point straight out that way. And if you're rising or going down, you know, you, you do have that ability to show that when you're in the altitude mode. And incidentally, same with the barometer mode, if I put it there, uh, okay. Again, my second hand could just be running as a normal second hand, or if I push this button, it can show me a differential, showing me that uh, the barometric pressure has been rising just a little bit in the last little while. 
So that uh, second hand could either be pointed up or down or holding steady. And you have the ability to show that when you're in that mode. I won't go into too many more details about how to track your altitude as you're using the watch. Maybe I'll make another video for that because we could we could spend a lot more time going into that. Uh, again, I'm going to show you here the this titanium bracelet. It's uh, pretty easy to use. Uh, it's got that nice ProTrek logo right on it. So what you do is you uh, you just release that latch there and then you squeeze here in the middle and see it comes undone just like that. Let me show you that again from another angle from here. Squeeze opens up just like that. And, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. What is not necessarily as straightforward is taking links out of the watch band in order to get it to the right size. Because it's titanium, there's a little extra piece of metal inside each link of the bracelet, and that can be tricky. It's a very small piece. I'm going to make a separate video on how to work with the titanium bracelet on this and other watches like it, and I'll post a link to that in the description right underneath this video. I'll give you a little detailed view here of the bezel and see that nice flat crystal there. So I hope that doesn't scratch too badly in the future. And there's the back of the watch. This is a stainless steel back. Looks like it was cased in Thailand. Uh, so again, it looks like the only titanium here really is the watch bracelet. And the rest of the case doesn't necessarily contain any titanium. But that's a nice texture on this back. It feels kind of like a soft... Just, it just feels soft. I don't know how they've done that. Let me give you a quick demonstration of the backlight here. My room isn't quite dark enough for a great demonstration, but if I push this button, you kind of see what that does. Lighting up, it's got a separate light for the LCD and a light that kind of shines up from the bottom across the face and actually hits the hands just a little bit, uh, so not, not bad there. And there is a glow-in-the-dark material on the face. There's quite a bit of it, so you, know, you can see how that, how that looks as compared to this uh, PRW50 that I reviewed a little while ago. That only has, you know, the, the glow-in-the-dark material on just the two hands. Whereas here, you know, boy, it's all over the place. Not bad. So there you go. I hope that was informative to you. You can get even more information if you follow that link below to a video about how to adjust the links on this bracelet. And with that, I think you'll be all set. Wonderful watch. I like it, and I'm going to enjoy wearing it. And I'm going to enjoy making more videos for you, so please stay tuned for more episodes of The Good Timekeeping Show.